Hello friends, uh, welcome to one more video on NISM series 19C which is about Alternative Investment Fund Manager Certification Exam. Uh, this is one of the toughest module uh, as far as NISM certifications are concerned. Uh, there are multiple reasons. Uh, the most obvious reason is that there are very few people who understand the concept of alternative investment in detail. Uh, there are many who understand basics of alternative investment, but this module expects you to low, know the alternative investment concept at length in detail, including ability to solve the numerical problems. Uh, considering the various challenges that this module poses for uh, those who aspire to write this exam or want to be successful, I have created multiple videos so far and in each of the videos I have tried to take up at least 10 questions which uh, uh, you know uh, you can attempt yourself to prepare yourself for exam. Uh, there is no guarantee that similar questions will be asked in the exam but at least uh, these uh, you know uh, questions which I have put in the video will help you to refre refresh your con concepts right. So in this video I am going to take you through what is called as regulatory framework of AIFs. Uh, this is about chapter 17 of the book, right? So you can go through chapter 17 and map these questions to uh, exact, you know, subsection. So let me let me just tell you what, which subsection I am referring to here. So uh, the topics that are covered under chapter 17 are four uh, broadly. They are listed as A, B, C, D. So if you see the chapter, you will see A, B, C, D. Uh, the first is SEBI Alternative Investment Fund Regulation 2012. The second is Foreign Exchange Management Act, which is B part of it. A C is Prevention of Money Laundering Act and D is other related SEBI regulations. So in this particular, uh, you know, uh, uh, video, I will take you through Foreign Exchange Management Act, 10 questions related to them. Uh, and uh, these questions are uh, technical, uh, not technical, rather legal in nature. So I would suggest that wherever you have any doubt, you can re-verify it with the material because you know, uh, legal concepts have many nuances and it's difficult to interpret them uh, successfully unless you are a qualified lawyer and you understand the uh, legal aspects of it in detail. Having said that, may I request all of you to subscribe to my channel and share it with the maximum number of people. I'm very pleased to tell all of you that this channel has already got 1400 subscribers. However, my own uh, plan is to take it beyond 10,000 so that you know more and more people uh, are successful in preparing for the exams that they want to write whether it is NISM exam or IIBF exam. So let me quickly take you to the questions that I want to cover all those 10 questions and I am starting with the first one which of the below mentioned statement is or are true. So basically the two statements that you see below they are in context of FEMA. Uh, and in context of uh, what is called as the AIFs, Alternative Investment Fund. So the first statement is, from income tax perspective, a person resident outside India will be NRI if he is either a citizen of India or an OCI cardholder. OCI is over overseas card cardholders that we have. Or, or, and or the, the, for the purpose of FEMA, NRI means a person resident outside India who is a citizen of India. Now this is the... These are the two definitions that we have, uh, which are given from two different tax perspective, income tax as well as FEMA. So both the statements happen to be true. So we'll go with the option both A and B. Uh, so I hope this is clear. So what we were trying to establish here was to evaluate whether both the statements are correct or not, and they are correct. So we have gone ahead with the answer D. The next question is, which of the following country's citizen is excluded, not considered for definition of PIO from FEMA perspective? So in FEMA's perspective, you know, we consider some of the countries whose citizens basically, uh, uh, you know, uh, are not going to be taken into account uh, for uh, arriving at whether the person is, uh, you know, PIO or not. So those countries whose list are, uh, rather who are outside the purview, they are Bangladesh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka. But China is something which is not, you know, uh, excluded. So which means China uh, is something which is not in the list of countries whose citizens are uh, not considered uh, from, from the definition of PIO's perspective. So the answer is C here, right? The next statement is under FEMA, the intention of stay is pertinent to prove residence, but under Income Tax Act, 
the physical uh, stay is important to decide residence now this is a key difference between fema and income tax uh, definition of uh, you know residence so this statement is true right uh, we move on to question number four so third we have just checked whether the statement is correct or not why 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 is it that i'm doing it because you know this will help you refresh your understanding the next question is the foreign portfolio investment route is available to non-resident investors wherein the size of such investment shall not be more than 10 percent of the post investment fully paid up capital of the listed indian investing company so it is just a data point so the percentage is 10 well this question may not be asked uh, straightforward in the you know exam but you may have this 10 percent data being part of some other question as well so if you remember 10 percent you will be able to solve maybe other questions or the similar types of questions successfully question number five which of the following is are covered under investment vehicle as per non-debt instrument rule ndi rules okay so real estate investment trust is considered infrastructure investment trust is also considered and uh, alternative investment funds governed by sebi are also covered so basically you know all a b and c are covered so the answer for this is also uh, four or uh, the one covering a b and c uh, now we move on to question number five which is pmla requires that reporting entities banks financial institutions and intermediaries such as aifs to maintain records of all cross-border wire transfer which means money which is moving from india to outside okay uh, uh, so that's your cro example of cross-border wire transfer it could be vice versa also right of value more than how much no it's not 10 lakhs if you think it's 10 lakhs or 20 lakhs it's wrong the right answer is 5 lakhs correct so you know why it is required because uh, wire transfers can be used for money laundering uh, so, uh, you know, if the threshold uh, limit is lower, then, uh, you know, worries are less. But if it is very high, then regulators may be considered, uh, may, be, um, may get concerned. And that's why this limit of 5 lakh has been set. The next question is, all resident investments which are strategic in nature for a business or long-term investment purpose make use of which route? Do they make use of FPI route? Do they make use of fbci route okay venture capital investment no they actually make use of fdi route fdi is more of a strategic or a long-term investments that you are making in india right in indian context the next question an aif which has received foreign investment or has made foreign investment abroad in any previous year or the current financial year shall file an annual return on foreign liabilities and assets by which date that is what we are trying to you know establish here so by 15th of july every year so remember this is more of a compliance requirement that you have and that's why this is a straightforward question where i'm you know kind of trying to assess your understanding of those days why because as i said earlier also such questions may not be asked in exam but this information may be part of some questions which may be asked in the exam right so the answer here would be july the next one, which of the below mentioned statement is not true about overseas investments of AIF? Okay, so when AIFs make overseas statement, sorry, investments, uh, they do certain or they follow certain processes, certain steps. So what does it say? AIFs desirous of making investment in offshore venture capital undertaking shall submit their proposal for investment to SEBI for prior approval. So they have to seek approval of SEBI. That's the statement one. Then they need to obtain separate permission from rbi as well uh, the approval is valid for six months to complete all investments under the sanction limit failing which it shall lapse so which of the three uh, you think is incorrect in fact it's a b because there is no separate permission for rbi which is needed here the sebi approval will do so the answer would be b here right so this is your question number nine which is quiz nine now we move on to question number ten under regulations 15.1a of SEBI IF regulation, an alternative investment fund may invest in securities of companies incorporated outside India subject to such conditions or guidelines that may be stipulated or issued by RBI and SEBI from time to time. Such investment shall not exceed what percentage? So here the percentage is not 10, it is not 20, 
nor it is 30 so it is 25 so what i have done quickly is that i have taken you through 10 questions uh, well that's the end of this particular video as i said i will be keeping i will be putting videos from time to time do not forget to subscribe to this channel and like this video thank you in anticipation of uh, you know encouraging response from all of you uh, please please attempt these questions whenever you are preparing for exam to assess your knowledge thank you